What's up guys, Winter Kills here, and welcome back to another, uh, feature match, I guess we call this one, uh, we got some Lanny and Mermels, me playing there on the left, and my brother playing Synchro Fusionist there on the right, uh, so pretty much for Fusionist, it's all or nothing first turn, didn't open up too well, but I opened up Teus and Dragoons, I actually kind of opened up pretty mediocre, uh, but then I think I ended up drawing Dragoons for turn, so it obviously, uh, saved, saved the day, we got Neptibus there, we got Adding that three cards of hand, uh, Megalo, I believe, uh, gunned in as well as a uh, heavy infantry. Uh, and then we'll get that Megalo on board. I believe I ditched a Marksman. It's going to hit a set card there at the Mizuki. Now I've got game there, anyways. So we're just going to go to game two. Uh, that's how easy it is to uh, get the victory against the deck. But obviously, he's going first and uh, he opens up well. It's pretty much an auto win, uh, like you're about to see here. He's going to end up going first, and he's going to end up opening really well. There's that ultimate rare e -Telly. you got to appreciate those things. He's going to open up e -Telly. Uh Probably going to go for... Uh, well, let's see. Let's, let's go over the target. Yeah, they've got Recover there. He could go into Ghost Ogre if he needed to. Uh, he could go into uh, Dr. Frankender if need be. Basically a free upstart goblin if you need it. But he's going to go into Recover. Normal Summon the Synchro Fusionist. Get the Search. Now we've got Tatsunoko on board and adding one of the key cards to his hand, which is the Brilliant Fusion, which is going to keep the engine going. Uh, the Brilliant Fusion engine, the Psychic engine, uh, the Clown engine, however small is there, it's necessary. Now he has the Seraphonite as well as the Trick Clown on board and that uh, Synchron Resonator. Basically, if you control a Synchro Monster, you can special summon it just for no cost. So that's why that was unveiled. It was not the second normal summon due to the uh, Seraphonite. The second normal summon will be the Unizombie. Now, uh, there's going to be some cuts here. He didn't want to didn't want to bump up the levels of the Librarian. He wanted to bump up the level of the Tatsunoko. And I allow him to switch over to it. I really don't care. Uh, I just want to see him make a really cool first turn. So we'll use the uh, first Seraphonite and that Unizami to make a uh, Cyframe Lord Omega, and then he's going to use the Tatsunoko and the Level Lever to make that Stardust Charge Warrior, which is a new card out of Gold Series, which is a very, very good card for this deck. It's a level 6 Formula Synchron, uh, and then basically has the effect of Sasanowo uh, to basically attack all monsters your opponent controls at the same time. Now we've got Formula and that uh, Charge Warrior, which give you a draw, a draw, a draw, like it's a 3-draw combo, um, you get the draw off the warrior. Actually, it's like a five card draw. You draw off warrior, librarian, then you can go into formula, get another two draws, and then you sink into the omega with the warrior and the formula, uh, and get another draw there. And you're creating for yourself a pretty decent level leader target. Level leader, one of the most important cards in the deck. Uh, pretty much, you can get librarian on the field, and you keep using that level leader to get plays going. Um, and that pretty much pretty much succeeds or secures your uh, success with the deck for that turn. Uh, maxi definitely something you don't want to be uh, side chaining to anything in this deck. Uh, maybe if you're unfamiliar with it, then yeah, I mean, I can see why you might make that mistake. But definitely Valor or Droll Lock would be your best bet for this deck, obviously. Uh, just because if you do end up seeing it first turn, being able to stop the hand loop, obviously is uh, pretty important. So we've got double level leader. And a Mizuki bringing out the Unizombie. Unizombie being once per turn, obviously you're not going to be able to activate its effect. Eating down the levels of the Librarian. And uh, now he has that Acel Synchron on board. Acel Synchron is going to send Jet Synchron, I believe, to increase its level to a level 6. Now making it a level eater target. Bringing back out double level eater. Bring it down to 5, then down to a 4. With the Jet Sync round, you're going to go for another Tatsunoko. Tatsunoko being another key card to get those uh, cards out of your hand that you necessarily want in the graveyard. Cards like Synchro Fusionist, um, Plague Spreaders. I mean, that's not really a good example because that is a tuner, but you know what I mean. Cards you want in your graveyard, uh, that's where that guy comes in handy. Now, he's going to refusion, not for Norden. Doesn't even get Insta Fusion off this turn. Uh, he's going to refusion for the Seraphonite and use the Tatsunoko. Level lead off the Seraphonite. Go for the Trish play. Hit the Dragoons out of my hands. Already got a Lind and a Pike. I've got two cards in left. He basically just needs to 
uh, recycle the Trish through Baxi or Desynchro. He is playing the Desynchro build. Uh, and there it is right there. Desynchro the Trish, resummon it back just like that. And now I'm starting my turn with one card. I draw the Raigeki, probably one of the best things I could have drawn. Uh, maybe an Eptibus, but I don't think it really matters this too much at this point. Uh, he ends up going into Yazi, Triple, Omega, and going to go into a Baxia. Baxia is going to come out and pop the Brilliant Fusion to special summon a level 4 or lower monster out of Graveyard. Uh, not any sort of specific monster, just any level 4 or lower. Summon the Tatsunoko and uh, swing in for some style points there as well as well for game. And we're going to go into game 2 here. Uh, one thing I really love about Synchro Fusion is just the vast amount of plays and the, the I think it's one of those decks that are kind of just a uh, menagerie of multiple archetypes and sort of uh, engines throw together that uh, don't come along that often that just do all these insane plays and I think those decks are uh, really really cool. I can learn to appreciate those decks. They do a lot of amazing things. So on my side of the field I am going to go first in fear of the hand loop. I'm going to go infantry into D.Va into Neptibus and then I'm going to go instant fusion into Dweller. Dweller going to hurt the deck a lot. Obviously going to be able to shut down all of his level leaders, anything. So if he doesn't have an out to this board I pretty much got game. Um, and you see that one ulti chalice there, maybe for a split second. I still need two more, and then everything will be complete, and I will be happy finally. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna go not summon Megalo. Almost did. And then I decided I've got some better plays to make. I'm trying to set up Mulan, and keep in mind it's been a couple days since I played. I kind of took a couple days off from playing, actually like a week of not playing, and uh, just because you know spring breaks here, and I've been just kind of chillaxing, doing other stuff sure you can understand but I haven't really had that much time to play uh, with Mermails really been messing around with Raid Raptors and stuff on DN and uh, before the whole C&D order was filed uh, been messing around on there so I didn't I kind of messed up the Moolin play a little bit I for some reason have this fascination with trying to get D.Va on board my first turn uh, and I don't know why I just need to get reacclimated with the deck and just play more uh, but I still end up making a pretty decent first turn board. I think I end up going Trish. Yeah, we go for the Trish, not using Tatsunoga's hand effect. It's irrelevant at the point. I've already had the Trish on field. And I've got the Desynchro out of his hand, uh, which is going to be really, really helpful. Because now he doesn't have anything to bait out uh, that Mizuchi, which is pretty much going to stop his entire play. And that'll be game three. And I will end up taking the match 2-1 against my brother. We had a very, very small tournament. Nobody really came out this week. Uh, we just kind of had a small five-man tournament. Yeah, we had five-man tournament. We just played in Round Robin uh, just just for fun to get some testing in and stuff like that. But that was a match against Synchro Fusionist. See, the deck can either explode or uh, cannot do anything at all. It's it's kind of a risk-taker, but it is consistent. Uh, maybe that wasn't the best example, but the deck is consistent in what it does as far as uh, making lots of synchros, drawing lots of cards, and then... The hand loop, which you may think, oh, that's once in a blue moon. It's not. The hand loop is uh, pretty, pretty easy if you can, if you know what you're doing. If you make the right combos, uh, one little slip up will punish you. And I, I really like decks that do that. It, it doesn't promote an autopilot play style. And let me know what you guys think on decks like that. Uh, not degenerate OTK decks. I mean, if you want to call it that, sure, whatever. But decks that like punish you for not making the right plays. I, I really like those decks and. I feel like Hope Konami can get back to making some of those decks soon and stuff like not autopilot like Cliff Fort with towers, uh, Super Quantums in a way if you're playing Super Quantum Turbo with the Megazord uh, Turbo to get on the on the field just autopilot Monarchs in a sense if they're playing if they're just relying heavily on Majesty's Fiend and stuff like that kind of autopilot uh, Mermail I don't think is one of those decks I mean maybe you think that everybody's entitled to their opinion. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you did. If you did, leave a like. You don't have to. Um, leave your comments down in the comment section below and your thoughts on the video. And if you're new here, do yourself a favor and subscribe, guys. Uh, the support is greatly appreciated. We just hit 1,500 subscribers not too long ago. And my God, guys, thank you so much for that. That really means a lot. Um, I really do enjoy doing this, and I'm uh, glad I can do it for you guys. I'm gladly will continue to. So uh, thank you guys so much for the support. It means a lot. And as always, Winter Kill is signing out. We'll see you in the next one, guys. There's nothing left for me to do than run and act myself a fool. No point in trusting anyone.